Welcome to Let's Color Grade episode two. That was awkward. In this episode, we're going to color grade a drone clip. That's something that a lot of you have requested. And I think there's so many people having drones these days. So I thought, why not? So I've recorded this clip that we are turning from this D-Log format from my Mavic 2 Pro into this grading. And what I really like about editing the drone clips is that you have so much diversity in the colors and the area and what you can work with. So if you got a grand landscape, there's really a lot of like depth and color to work with. So I think that's really fun. Now, one thing to say before we jump into the computer, this clip was quite underexposed when I shot it. And it was actually a clip that I for a long time didn't use for anything because I thought it was too underexposed, but it turned out it could actually work pretty well. So I'm super excited to show you that. So if you have underexposed footage, this was shot at sunset and there was not that much light left. This is what you can still do with it. So let's head into the computer and have a look at it. All right, we are inside of DaVinci Resolve and I've just dragged the clip in. I've made a 4K timeline and this is the clip that we are working with as said before. So let's just jump directly into the color tab. Let's close this one up and the clip as well. So we have a little bit more real estate. Drag this over a tiny bit and here we go. So let's just create the note tree. We're doing the exact same structure as we did the last time. So I'm just using option S to make more notes. And we're dragging this one down here and then the last one over here. Now, one thing to notice is that we are gonna do the color space transform again as we did the last time. This time we're gonna use the DJI D gamut and the DJI D lock. Very dark right now. Still pretty dark when we select the Rec 709 and the output gamma for Rec 709 as well. So this is what I mean. This was quite underexposed. And another thing to know is that these settings are, I think this is a newer codec or newer color space and gamma than what my drone is because my drone is the Mavic 2 Pro, which is like six, seven, eight something years old, mine is around five, I think, um, but it came out way before I bought it. So this color space transform doesn't really match the colors exactly, but I've been using it and it works quite okay. So let's just try and save this footage because it looks obviously way too dark and you probably know if you underexpose stuff, you tend to get a lot of noise. So let's try and not get too much noise, but still see what we can work with. So we're heading to the second node to begin with, and we are gonna just try and increase the gamma, increase the lift a little bit, then increase the gain. Maybe actually reset the lift so that we're not messing too much with the shadows, and just increasing the gamma a little bit, increasing the gain a little bit more, and look at that. Like, it is a little bit noisy, but I think it's okay. So let's do our tone curve. Just create a little bit more contrast, like such. Maybe raise the midtones a little bit, as I like to do. And I think we're looking okay in terms of noise. I mean, it's not, it's not too bad. Now, one thing that I didn't notice with this clip in the beginning and what threw me off, and is another reason that I didn't use it, is that the white balance was off. So when I figure that, we just drag the white balance the temperature a little bit to the right not too much but like maybe around 500 that just looks a lot better let's try and see maybe the tint needs a little bit as well so just maybe around five to the magenta side and look at that that makes to me a pretty big difference because now it actually looks as how we shot it's still pretty dark but i think it's okay so these were just the settings that we did to begin with so let's just do the very quick recap Let's just deselect all of these. So we added the color space transform, converted it to Rec 709, last node as usual, just to make sure that this is the last thing that happens and we have the full color space to work with over here. Then we added some exposure or adjusted the exposure just to kind of balance this out down in the waveform. Added some contrast, obviously pulled it a little bit apart again, but I think that's okay. And then we adjusted the temperature just to look way nicer. Now we'll jump into the color grading. So let's just jump over to the hue versus hue, make all of our points, and then just see what we can do. So I think we got a little bit of the color up here that are bright, but it might just be yellow. Right now we actually don't have 
that much over there, but we can see that we're affecting the cliff down here. So let's just make that a little bit more red. Let's see if this does. This also makes a little bit of a difference, so maybe closer to where it was in the beginning. Just making this a little bit more red to fit the sunlight. The greens we can pull up a little bit as well, just to make them slightly warmer. Then our sea ocean, I would like to make this just a little bit more teal, but not too much. Then it'll look unnatural. And then dragging this one, I think we'll just drag it down a little bit to counter that as well. So very subtle difference, almost nothing. Going into the saturation, I don't think we'll do much here. We might just boost the reds just a little bit. The greens as well. Look at how these are looking. I think boost, we just boost basically everything a little bit. Mostly unnoticeable, but we're doing it anyway. And then for the luminance, let's just boost the red and the yellows a little bit. I think we'll de like pull down the luminance for the greens. Pull it up just a little bit for the blues. And it's subtle, but you can see a slight difference that we've made. Made it a little bit warmer over here, made it a little bit more teal over here. We haven't really affected this part up here. It looks like it's mostly just white as it's blown out a little bit, but I think that's fine. So that's it for over here. Let's go into our primary wheels and see if we can fiddle around with a little bit of texture or like lift color. So I think we'll just drag this down towards the blues a little bit, like the teal greenish down here. Looks pretty good. The gamma, we'll pull that up and just see what it does. So it makes it a lot warmer. So we might want it to be around this area and then I'll just drag it down a little bit again. Okay, and then the gain, which will probably mostly affect this area up here. Let's try and pull that up and look at that. This is how we can get our sunset colors back. So let's not go too much overboard, but let's just slightly increase it. So I think around here maybe. Oh, it's difficult to get the right color. So maybe the purple looks best actually. So let's just make it around this tone. This is a huge difference. So you can see how the gain really makes it look like the sunset that it was. So I think that's pretty good. Huge difference from this to this. And if we hadn't made these changes before, it would be just slightly more yellow. And then let's go into our color warmer to see what we can do here. So we can actually pull this a little bit away from the magenta again, just a little bit. And the yellows pull those maybe a little bit more towards the reds. So we're actually getting back, but I think I'll pull them slightly down and maybe do the same with the reds, just so they're not as dominant. And I think we are pretty much good with the rest of the colors. So I'll just come and see that. Okay. And then just go into our log wheels. I'm not sure we're going to change that much. But just see, we can put just a little bit more teal into the shadows, just to kind of counterbalance a little bit of that gain we put in before. And let's see the midtones. Do we want to do anything here? Yeah, we can pull those a little bit more towards the yellow side, just a little bit, not a huge difference. And then the highlights, pull those just a little bit over here as well. Didn't make a huge difference, but it just makes it a little bit more toned up here in terms of what we did up in highlights. So I think that's pretty good. So let's have a look at what we did with the color grading. We went from this to this, which I think is a pretty dramatic effect. And now for the last step, We'll just make a parallel note down here so that these two will be mixed because this will be our masking layer. So let's make a circle mask or power window. Let's stretch it out quite a bit, feather it, and then click Shift H to see what we're selecting. We can do that way more. And I think we'll actually pull it out a little bit as well. Feather it some more, maybe even feather it a little bit more up to 100. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, and then we will go back to our primary wheels and then just push up the gamma and the gain because I really, I don't really care that it's blown out. We might adjust that in a minute, but I just want these colors to be 
way more bright. And then I want to add more of our actual like the color that I want. So it was more magenta before. I want it to be this more orange hue. So you can see if we deselect that, it's quite a big difference that we've made. And we might actually just go and drag this out and then just end up. So if we do it like this and then actually just pull up, maybe make the soft to like 200. Oh, we can't. <laughs> So we'll just drag it down a little bit and zoom out. Can we do it? We can actually pull it up a little bit more. So if we click Shift H, we've just pulled it back a little bit to make sure that the bright part here is not as strong. Maybe pull it back just a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So it to me, it doesn't really matter that it's overexposed over here. One thing we could do just to make it a little more pleasing is go into the custom curve still in the same power window and then just have our highlights go a little bit up but then drag down the whites and that way we can just soften the look a little bit so it it is not actually overexposed up here and maybe do it a little bit more drag this up on line and i think i think that looks pretty good the last thing i want to do with this clip is just to make a squared mask or rectangular if you will rotate it a little bit towards the sun Drag it up, make it bigger, drag it all the way over to the side. Look at what we are doing with Shift H and then drag out the feathering as well. And that for that, we want to first reduce the gamma and reduce the left. Reduce the gamma a little bit more. Maybe reduce the gain just a slight bit. And then maybe just drag the left a little bit more to the blue side. Look at what difference that made. So now we got, because we're dragging it to the teal or blue side, we get this deeper green. You can see that there's blue in it, but I kind of like this, this look. We could drag a little bit more green into it, but I think then it looks a little bit too much. So maybe just pull up a little bit of orange into the gamma. Doesn't make a huge difference. And I kind of like how this is looking now. So just with these two masks, we went from this to this, which is a quite a big difference in my opinion. So let's just take off the power window and let's have a look at this. Pretty big difference. So that's how we actually went from, if we just take all, oh, I can't do that. Take away all the colors. This is what we started with after we had corrected for the exposure and the contrast and the white balance. Then we just color graded a little bit to make it look better. But this was still kind of off, especially now that we've seen the end. And then it really comes together with the masking, at least for me. So we really got these nice sunset tones. And then because we are balancing the, the image a little bit more from the left, I think this gets a really nice look with the dark area here. And let's just play it through and see what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good, if I have to be honest. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And I hope you find it useful. I actually think it's not that noisy either, which is pretty nice. You can not see some noise down here. So that could be something that we were working with. If you have the full version of DaVinci, you have some really good denoising tools. I don't yet, but for Instagram and whatever, I think this is more than fine. And you could just go in and fine tune all this and then make sure that it looks better or it's not uh, as noisy but again it was underexposed when I shot it so that's my fault in the beginning and we just didn't have enough light basically so that's it that was the end of let's color grade episode two with a drone clip this time if you have any questions whatsoever in regards to what I just said and what I just showed you please leave a comment down below I'm happy to help and if you have any suggestions as to what kind of footage I should color grade the next time you are more than welcome to do that as well besides that I'm happy to help and I hope you learned something and these are so fun to make for me. So there'll be coming a lot more of those as well. Until the next time, see you and take care.